Hello everyone, welcome to another segment of Shell Black Whiteboard where we help you get the most out of the Salesforce platform. I'm Shell Black, president and founder of shellblack.com and Salesforce MVP. We're gonna wrap up opportunities. I wanna hit two related lists that are on opportunities, stage history and contact roles. So you have your opportunity record and a related list is a section that displays below the opportunity. So you have activities, but these are two that are unique to opportunities. So let's go through these and make sure you understand them. Stage history. So stage history is pretty unique because it is actually gonna track when something changes on either the stage, amount, probability, or the close date field. And that really starts to tell a story when you're looking at an opportunity. You wanna know who changed it, when, what was the prior value, and what's the current value. Did the, the amount go up? Did the probability to go down? Are we continuing to push the close date out? As you look at all these changes in this related list, it really does tell you a little bit about the history and the story behind that. And as an administrator or maybe a, a sales VP, you can start asking questions. Automatic happens out of, out of the box. It's one of the few places that, that Salesforce just tracks stuff for you, but it's really important. There's also some history reporting that you can use off this section. That's about it on stage history. Let's look at contact roles. The thought around contact roles is as a salesperson, you wanna make sure you know all the people involved in the decision around an opportunity. The more people you know that have an influence or a say in an opportunity and you've, have, you've engaged all those people and been able to identify them all, you have a better chance of winning that opportunity. So the way Salesforce supports you tracking the players on an opportunity is through contact roles. And let's look at this diagram. Hopefully it'll help uh, tell the story of how this works. So we have two accounts and we have our contacts, these little uh, purple people below that, and these big blue circles are opportunities. So we've got two opportunities that are related to this account or this company. We have another opportunity that's related to this account. So on the opportunity, there's a, a related list where you can add people in this contact role, the, how they play on the deal. So this opportunity, we've added one contact they are in the role of decision maker. And this, this role is just a pick list that you define. We'll talk about that, that in a little bit. So this one, this contact, I'm sorry, this opportunity has one contact for this person. He's the decision maker. On this opportunity, we know two people that have a role on this deal. One's legal. So maybe there's contract review in, involved and maybe that's legal counsel and that's his, his pers that person's role. And then we know another person on that deal and this person's the decision maker. Even though this is, we're selling to the same company, notice that the decision maker here was different than the decision maker here. And just a point to take away that the, the roles might change deal to deal. It may not be the same players, the same people involved in every opportunity. Okay, let's take a look at our third opportunity. So we're selling to this company, they have an opportunity out there. In this use case, we actually have three contacts identified. What's interesting is this contact works for a completely different company than this one. And this person, we've put them in the role of influencer. This person's our decision maker. This person is engaged in financing. So maybe it's the CFO and they want to know the, the financing aspects of a deal. When you have multiple contacts on a deal, Salesforce also gives you a, a checkbox to mark one as the primary, the one that's the most important of all the roles on that. So a couple of things to recap on contact roles. You don't have to select the contact role on an opportunity, there's a couple of instances where Salesforce will create that contact role for you. So one is on lead conversion. So when you convert a lead, uh, the contact or the person, when you convert a lead, also it gets associated to the opportunity in a contact role. The other time that it happens automatically is if you create the opportunity from a contact record. So if I'm on John Doe's contact, I click the new opportunity button, they're automatically gonna be stuck in a contact role on that new opportunity. We talked about it here where you have different decision makers on opportunities. Just to call out, again, your contact roles can change deal by deal or opportunity by opportunity. The primary checkbox is good to help identify the number one or the primary contact when you have multiple players, multiple contacts on a deal. And the other thing that to remember is the, the contact role is a pick list. So decision maker, legal, influencer, financing. This is a pick list that you define. Salesforce has a suggested list that comes out of the box. Technical evaluator, influencer, they may have no bearing on your business. So I really encourage you to go in there and think about what really resonates and makes sense for your business. So I'm gonna give you a couple here. I'm gonna go a quick use case scenario of, let's say we're a real estate agent. Uh, and, and for selling a home, the roles are quite varied. So you might have a contact who is in the role of the potential homeowner. 
You might have a contact that's the financer, right? They might be the bank contact that's, you know, putting up the mortgage for, for the house. Uh, the seller's agent, so the other real estate agent who's representing the seller. And you might have an appraiser as another contact role, the person that's evaluating the house and appraising the house for, for, the, for the mortgage. Pretty wild use case. Notice that a lot of these contacts work for completely different companies than the real estate agent. So kind of an interesting use case just to kind of uh, hit home that you go ahead and set up your own pick list values for contact roles. All right, so that wraps up our couple of related lists stage history and contact roles. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any feedback on how we're doing, we would love to hear it. You can hit us a couple of ways. You can reach me on Twitter, shell underscore black, or you can send me an email, whiteboard at shellblack.com. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you soon.